I I um I go live also. I go live also. So um and what happened is that my live just kicked out. So please bear with me, people that you listen just to the audio. Y'all are dope. I love you guys. <laughs> nah, man, because it started from the audio, but I'm also giving the option for people to watch my beautiful face on video also. <laughs> the caller then hung up, and if you're returning, a Pittsburgh man claiming to be Jesus was attempted, uh, was charged with attempted homicide after he allegedly stabbed three people in an apartment. And if it was really Jesus, he don't leave no witnesses because <laughs> He's going to make sure the job gets done. Uh, emergency dispatchers received a call before 2 a.m. Monday from a man who claimed, who said someone is trying to kill him. And if he would have told them it was Jesus <laughs> over the phone, they probably would have went back to playing spades. The caller then hung up and responding authorities found three stabbing victims in an apartment in the Carrick neighborhood of Pittsburgh. After attending to the victims, Officers heard a noise coming from the apartment's basement. They had they and a canine unit then found Rami Jasim, 33, hiding in the basement's rafters. See, Jesus wouldn't have to hide, baby. If you meet Buddha on the road, kill him. <laughs> Officers, yeah, look up what that means. Officers took Jasim to the Allegheny County Jail, but he was not interviewed as he was being uncooperative. Yeah, I don't have to answer no questions. I am who I am. Um, <laughs> oh, one male victim was listed in stable condition and another in critical condition, Trip Live reported, while the female victim was listed in serious condition. And I joke, but this is really messed up. Um, one of the injured men told officers in an interview that Jasim was offered a chance to stay at the apartment because he was homeless, according to a criminal complaint. Oh, the victim said they were discussing the Gregorian calendar when Jasim said he was Jesus and proceeded to stab people. See, this is why you don't invite strangers in off the streets. Most of the, some of the times, people that are homeless are homeless for a reason. It's because they burnt a million bridges that landed them where they are. And yeah, it's not a good thing, I mean, but sometimes it is what it is. You, sometimes people that are homeless, in this case, definitely, this is a great example, that the big, that one of the injured men told the officers in an interview that Jasim was offered a chance to stay at the apartment because he was homeless. The victim said they were discussing the Gregorian calendar. And if you meet a homeless person that knows the Gregorian calendar, <laughs> that knows the Gregorian calendar, then please, <laughs> you got, you can't let him in because he, he's, he's sick. He's, he's something, there's something wrong with his noodle said he was Jesus and proceeded to stab people. God, the woman who was injured in the stabbing added that they were all just hanging out, man, a little bit of pot a night, and smoking some white boys, and he just said the Gregorian calendar and stabbed everybody. The night of the attack, then you see you gotta read the room. The night of the attack before she saw Jasim allegedly go into one man's bedroom in the apartment. She then saw the man have been stabbed and Jasim allegedly then began stabbing her and claimed to be Jesus. Whoa! Jasim was, start, was charged with three counts of attempted homicide and three counts of aggravated assault in the case. The investigation is ongoing. Yes, yeah. Hey, okay. be it. It's it's good to want to do nice things for people, but also be wary at the same time. Please be wary because that is. Letting strangers in your house is you gotta, I don't know, ask the question like, why is that stranger in a position that he is right now? I mean, because maybe he did something similar to somebody, or he just did a lot of foul, or he or she or she did a lot of foul stuff that got him in that situation. Yes. Next up, four, and once again, for the people that tuned into that got disconnected from the live my live disconnected and um i will probably patch patch the audio together the audio should be good it's just the live is gonna be like in two parts so yeah it's gonna all be there and sometimes things happen <laughs> sometimes things happen uh next up 
Australian scientists in Antarctica aren't allowed to brew their own beer anymore. Damn it, it's cold. What the hell am I going to do down here? There's nothing else to do in Antarctica. Ice is ice. How many samples do you want me to take? Now, I could brew some cold-ass beer down there. Yo, ooh, what? You brew some cold beer down in Antarctica. You're a bad man. Now, you're telling me I can't get drunk while I'm down there doing years, doing a year study, a pilgrimage, and just... <laughs> You can't even look in no, there ain't even no polar bears. There's nothing down there to look at. It's just freaking ice. And you mean to tell me I can't have a drink? Shit. Make me want to get a taste. Just talking about it. Reservation. Most people don't need much to be happy. You give me some good records and a case of beer and I could be left alone for days. But if you only gave me a half a case of beer, well, that could be trouble. <laughs> it's a dilemma Australian scientists hold up in Antarctica are going to have to deal with. They're going to kill each other down there. The Australian government is planning to seriously tighten alcohol rules at their stations, including slashing the amount of beer, wine, and spirits expeditioners can take to the icy continent nearly in half. Why are you doing that? You know what? Whoever's slicing the budget for that, you go down there for, for a year or a few months and see how you do without no booze. Fuck people, man. Despite, despite not citing any specific incidents, Kim Ellis, director of the Australian Antarctic Division, stated that the new policy recognizes the need to create a comfortable and safe community atmosphere on research stations. And why? What does that have to do with limiting the alcohol? I get me a shot, have me a beer and a shot, and all of a sudden now I want to sit down and look at and take pictures and do samples. Look at the look at the microscope. Do cool shit while engaging socially and to celebrate special occasions. Now, if you're out there and you're isolated around a whole bunch of people that you haven't lived with before and strangers and shit, alcohol can be an icebreaker. That's how I roll. That's how I feel. Now, I mean, like, yeah, if you're around responsible adults that know how to drink to a point where, yeah, you get a nice buzz and you talk and you joke. And like, yeah, you're stuck on a boat with these people for months at a time. And you mean to tell me that <laughs> somebody's going to strangle somebody? <laughs> how many beers you got in the fridge? Yeah, I'm down to about a six pack. How many do you got? I got one. Let me in. <laughs> Give it up. It's incredibly cold and incredibly harsh and very small mistakes can lead to very big consequences. So, but that's what you're trained. You should be trained. They should be trained professionals. So start next summer, AAD staff will be limited to just 10 standard drinks a week. Fuck you. <laughs> I'll do 10 drinks in a fucking day. Yo, 10 drinks. And before fucking three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm already like, okay, well, who's ready for it? <laughs> Government health guidelines. The policy also dictates the number of alcoholic drinks that researchers can take to Antarctica. What? Seven cans per beer a week? Are you kidding me? That's one can a day. Just enough to make me want to drink about 40 more. What's wrong with these people? 1.5 bottles of wine. I don't drink wine. Or, uh, or champagne. Yeah, you can have it. And one bottle of spirits. Damn. Those amounts are reportedly only a little more than half of the current limit. You people are savages. Are they doing, a, are they doing research on Antarctica? Or are they doing research on a human condition when you isolate them with a bunch of strangers and take alcohol out the equation? <laughs> they need to be filming that. Additionally, home brewing, which apparently has a long tradition and a long tradition in the Antarctic, dating back to the days where transporting beer was much more difficult, will also be banned. So I can't make my own beer? You people are, ooh, I don't want to go anymore. The home brew, the home brew was just adding too much alcohol to the total volume. That's making that shit strong. Damn right. My job is to provide a safe operating environment. You're a dick. We're really working at the moment on diversity and equity in the program. The sad truth of it is, Alcohol makes people lose inhibitions, and I am determined that women in our program should feel safe. So what y'all trying to low-key say somebody got drunk and did something to the women? That would be a thing. Okay.
okay, I'll back off a little bit. I'll take about 20% off. <laughs> I'll take I'll take 20% off if if you if you got a feeling that it's starting to make women feel uncomfortable when the guys get a little bit uh they get a little bit too tipsy. The part of that is providing an environment where alcohol is controlled. Well, you know what? Uh if you're alone on a boat, then regardless of alcohol, if you're on the boat with a perv or a jerk or just an all-around asshole, man or woman, then it's going to come out whether there's alcohol or not. I mean, it's just, it's just a matter of time. Let them have the goddamn Jeez. Cold as hell. We're doing it. They're making their research and shit that's going to help the world. And you mean they can't have a drink? These people are disgusting. It's embarrassing. No. <laughs> Delete that. And who keeps texting me? Next up. Big city police forensic lab worker let boyfriend hide out in her home after he killed his ex-wife. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's like we starting to see more stories of we starting to see more stories of like COs and just like the story from uh from last night where the guy was using a police database to to find women to try to hook up with. <laughs> yeah, you got these police officers and these law enforcement people are seeing some very handsome men and some very pretty women. It just so happens that they're in cuffs and they're like, yo. What better time to shoot your shot than with somebody that got legal problems or somebody that's behind the wall because they have nothing but time. They have plenty of time to chat. <laughs> what else are they going to do? They got plenty of time to chat. Authority say, Tamia Foley, inside the confines of a police forensic lab, a Missouri woman help authorities in the work of nailing criminal suspects. That is, before a boyfriend was on the run for killing his wife, authorities say, makes me want to play the Mary J. Blige Method Man song for some reason. To me, fully, a 25-year-old employee of the St. Louis Police Department was arrested on Wednesday after authorities said she let her boyfriend hide out in her home for almost three days. Wow. Police claim she knew at the time that he was wanted for illegally shooting his ex-wife to death. Police charged Foley with two felony counts of hindering the prosecution of a felony for sheltering her boyfriend, 26-year-old Christopher Turner, in her apartment at the, well, we don't need to know her address, did you? And he looks like a Michael Strahan, like, <laughs> like Michael Strahan just stopped eating his Wheaties. <laughs> oh, Christopher Turner. According to a report from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch Foley, who had worked for the, 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 the department since March of 2020, uh, allegedly agreed to hide Turner on Saturday evening after he explicitly told her that he just killed his wife. Oh, no. Wow. Charges say that after Christopher Turney, Turner told her he killed his wife, fully sheltered, clothed, and fed him. <laughs> Women, stop throwing your life away for these dudes, man. Stop throwing your life away. As soon as he, yeah, yeah. To, to, how much does he really care to put you in a situation like that, knowing that you're involved with the police and still put you in a, in a situation where you lose your career and you lose your freedom? Nah, man, like, they, a man that would do that don't really, no. If he really cared about you, he'd take his medicine and he'd take his medicine, he'd, he'd take responsibility for what he did and do as much as he can to keep you as far away from it as possible. St. Louis County, but yeah, it's all, yeah, they'd still find out they were messing around, maybe. But yeah, St. Louis County Police Spokeswoman Sergeant Tracy Panis further told local Fox affiliated station that Foley also explained to police that she specifically went to the store to purchase Turner new clothes. Damn. Tripping. Panis, yeah, Panis also said that when she was first interviewed by authorities, 
fully lied about her involvement in Aiden Turner, they were going to find out. Come on. They were going to find out. Damn. Took a few steps toward his car before turning around and shooting her an additional three times. Damn. When yeah, Turner was captured on surveillance, uh, waiting for Charlisa to return home, his ex. Yo, if that's your ex, then you already out of the situation. Why you want to kill her? Man? Damn. When she arrived, he allegedly shot her three times, then turned around, took a few steps toward his car for turning around and shooting her an additional three times. Jeez. Christopher and Charlisa had three children together, all of whom were under the age of six. And damn, why would you? Were divorced in 2019, Turner was arrested on suspicion of domestic assault for allegedly threatening to kill Charlisa and their children with a gun. That's when she, uh, you got to get him out. That first time he does that, that first time he does that, then he needs to be put away. Get away. Restrain an order, whatever it takes. The following year, a state judge reported the rule that Charlisa had denied and interfered with Christopher Turner's ability to have access to the children without good cause. She was issued it. That still doesn't mean that you got to kill her. God damn. After you, you know what? Fuck the courts. Fuck the courts. After you put a gun to me and my kid's head, then... I don't care what the courts say. You can't see my children. Yeah, I'll pay the 250 huh. Yeah, fuck off. I mean, he's crazy. Police arrested Turner at Foley's apartment on Monday. Foley was taken into custody on Wednesday. Turner is being held on a million-dollar cash bond. Yeah, she's, needless to say, she's lost her job. <laughs> Yo, don't let these men drag you down. There was a uh, there was an article I didn't read it, and they was like, "Yo, stay out of your acquaintances' divorces," and this is exactly why. I uh, mean, like basically, you really while they were going through that whole divorce period, you should be nothing more than a friend, not even like yo. If I don't know if I was to meet a girl that was currently going through a divorce, I would probably be like, "Yo," or just take care of the divorce. I uh, mean, because you don't know what could happen in the middle of a situation like that. They could turn around and and be like, well, we fell back in love together and be looking at you like you tried to break them up. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, I don't think I would be, I don't think I would be in a relationship with a woman that's currently going through a divorce. Yeah, that, it seems like it'll be a lot. It would be a whole lot. Uh, next up. Wow. Went to go get clothes for him. He wants to marry his parents. Hell no. A woman passed out after drinking. A man dumped her in the cold to die. Jeez. Court doc say. An Indianapolis man, this is why you can't drink with everybody. And yeah, this is why you can't drink with that. This is why you can't smoke or drink or just shit. Let's leave the drinking and drugging alone and to the side and say that's why you just can't chill with <laughs> everybody, period. Uh, I mean, like an, an Indianapolis man charged in a woman's death in a, in a woman's death in the cold behind a larger mat in February told police he dragged a woman in the snow after she fell asleep while they were hanging out and drinking in his car. Why would you do that? You take her home, or you like, or you take her home, or you pull over and you, you know, like you let her sleep it off or something. You leave her in the snow. What does she do to you? Shit. Justin Holman was charged with reckless homicide more than four months after police found 50-year-old Chanel Smith dead in a snowbank behind a laundromat in the early hours of February 19th. That's fucked up. Surveillance video from the night obtained by Indy Star shows a man dragging a seemingly unresponsive Smith out of the passenger seat before throwing the woman's belongings next to her. He did, damn. An autopsy conducted the same day. Uh, she died of an environmental cold exposure, but the Marion County coroner told Indy Star Smith's death was ruled a homicide because the video showed the man intentionally leaving the unconscious woman and harsh elements. Why 
what, what would you do that for? And she's nice enough to chill with your dumb ass. <laughs> ladies, ladies, this is a this is the definition of what you would call a fool. That somebody would be nice enough to chill with your with his bum ass. And this is how he repays it. A day after the incident, a police tracked the car to a residence a half mile from the laundromat and found Holman, who put on what appeared to be the same jacket and hat. Yeah, Holman told detectives he and Smith had been hanging out and drinking in his car. Yeah, you're a suspect. Between the laundromat and the Jason, they were just trying to see if you were going to lie. Then you really, really would have been a suspect. You would have been a super Saiyan suspect then. The afternoon of the incident, he says Smith had fallen asleep and would not wake up, so he pulled her out of the vehicle. And you didn't, you wouldn't think to like take her to the hospital or just take her home or just turn the heat on, god damn it, and see if like, yeah, like, uh, you okay, baby? Wake up, you know, like, nah, man, like, shit. No police identified Holman as a suspect a day after the incident. He was formally charged with reckless homicide. The coroners gave the police a, its homicide ruling and toxicology tests. Okay, once this is determined to be a homicide, the criminal investigation takes another turn. Yeah, it all takes time. They're going to charge him with a murder, with a homicide. Yeah, he needs to, um, he needs to do some hard time. For Smith's family, the arrest of a suspect in a case comes as, yeah, how do you feel about your, your mom or your sister or anybody, your friend or whatever? They just go walking out the door like they've done so many times. And that one time that they don't come back, you just feel it in your chest that something's not right. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, that's something that we all worry about in the back of our heads. And when it happens, it's really messed up. But for some, the charges against Holman are too light. Yeah, yeah. Everyone is upset that he is only locked up for a level five felony. What's a level five felony? We are not very happy with the case so far. My kids will never be able to see their mother ever again because of what he's done. Yeah, he's a jerk. He's a fucking asshole. He deserves the fucking, yeah, he deserves hard time. I don't know if he deserves, I, I don't know. I'm not a judge, but I don't know. Maybe he deserves to get his head slammed up against the wall a couple times and thrown in a jail cell. <laughs> you know, you do, yeah, it, it, it has, you have to put a bow on the jail time, you know. Put a little mint on the jail time or a little chocolate on the jail time, you know. Just just kick his head up against the wall a few times. <laughs> Give him a little something, you know. Last story. How we doing on time? 35 minutes with the, yeah, with the, um, so the audio should be straight, the audio should be straight for this episode 97 of the half cast, yes, but, uh, the, the, the live, the video is going to be in two parts, which kind of, and I'm pretty sure I can melt it together but i do not want to go to mixpad video and and do all that so <laughs> so you're gonna get the lazy version <laughs> you're gonna get you're gonna get the two humps version in the uh in the uh so. last story indiana woman Use axe to remove Indiana woman shot husband and use axe to remove legs. Yes, ladies, make a statement. You know why? Because you want to run. You want to run around with all these holes. There you go. How you gonna run around with all these holes if you ain't got no legs? You want to step? You don't. You don't want to step. Step in the name of love. Then yeah, I'm gonna take your legs away. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. And in Laporte, Indiana, an Indiana woman charged in her husband's fatal shooting used an axe to cut off his legs before trying to enlist her two teenage children in a failed plan to burn his remains. <laughs> Yo, 
know why the kids got to be in on it. Like, yo, when I read this just now, I thought they were, I thought she was trying to tell her two teenage kids to each grab a leg and cut them off to make a wish or some type of stupid turkey shit. I mean, that's a Monica. Whoa. That's why she's angry. How are you in the middle of making love with your woman and you say, oh, that's a Monica. <laughs> What do you call her, Thessy? Lonnie? That's a, no, no, no way. Of Laporte is charged with murder, abuse of a corpse, and several other counts in July 28th shooting and the July 28th shooting, fatal shooting of her husband, Randy Allen. See? During the 34-year-old woman's initial hearing Wednesday, the judge entered a not guilty plea on, on her behalf and appointed her a public defender. Oh, God. The LaPorte County Chief Public Defender didn't immediately reply to a message, sneaky comment from the attorney assigned to defend Allen. And I'm pretty sure, uh, basically, public defenders are really just there to, like, make sure you understand what your charges are. I really don't think they're going to have, like, a, like a Johnny Cochran all-out fight for you in the courtroom. In court documents, authorities say a Michigan man who has a child with Thessalonica Allen, Thessalonica, told police about who named her that, about the killing last Thursday, saying she contacted him, claiming her husband had been beating their child. Okay. Yeah. When the man entered her apartment, she showed him her husband's body in a closet and sought his help moving it to her vehicle, but he declined. Damn right. He declined, saying he wanted to return home. Fuck yeah! <laughs> yeah, he definitely proved right then that he's not one of the friends that you could call at 3 o'clock in the morning to hide a dead body. And for that, I appreciate that. Uh, they, like, he flat out like, oh, nah, no, 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 no. The man told officers that Thessalonica threw a gun out of the car as she dropped him off at his Michigan home and told him she had to shoot Randy because he was beating on her and her kids. Oh, shit, the court documents say, after police arrested Allen and Laporte, thank you for calling her just Allen, because Thessalonica is like, that's a lot. It sounds like, a, it sounds like a, 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 a challenge in the Olympics. Yes, I ran the, I ran the Thessalonica in, in 2.5 seconds, whatever. <laughs> I jumped the Thessalonica uh, yeah, 16 meters or whatever. A city about 10 miles south of the Michigan border in northwest Indiana. She confessed to shooting her husband following a physical altercation. Officers later found her husband's partially dismembered body inside a tote in their apartment. God! She then admitted she had to cut Randy's legs off because she wasn't able to fit them inside the tote. And what, was she cursing Randy out? The whole time she was trying to cut his legs off. Even in death, you're getting on my fucking nerves. I had to had use an axe to remove, it, remove his limbs. It take too much energy to kill somebody. You should have just took the kids and left his dumb ass. His, her two teenage children told officers they didn't see any physical altercation on the day Randy Allen died. Wow, she probably, probably made it up to try to like, yeah, after he confronted Thessalonica, about the website, okay. They said the day before he was killed, he was helping he was helping them do homework on a computer when he found the website their mother their mother had visited. Court documents state what was the website? After he confronted Thessalonica Allen about the website when she got home, they argued and the children heard a loud bang. The children said they then saw Randy Allen on a bedroom floor. <laughs> Don't ask me about my business. Don't you ask me about my business. <laughs> the children, why is this website? Wow, what is this website, Thessalonica? What is this website? Yeah, why are you being nosy? Know what I mean? Like, the children say this. Saw Randy Allen on the bedroom floor, and he asked them to call 911, but their mother ordered them not to do it. Oh, yeah, she, that was probably premeditated. Yeah, if it wouldn't have been that, it probably would have been something else. She was just buying her time. 
She later awakened him in the middle of the night to ask him for help dragging his body. Why do I gotta be down with what you did? I mean, God damn, this whole mother, this whole mother-child relationship thing is overrated, mom. I'm telling you, I'm not down with this. But it was too heavy for them to move, according to the court documents. <laughs> the children said their mother came home the next day with cleaning supplies and an axe. God, she was, she was committed. She was committed. They didn't notice his legs had been removed. I would have left that fucking house screaming. I don't care. That mother-son relationship, that mother-daughter relationship goes out the window the minute you tell me to help hide the goddamn body. And that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Their mother had plans to take the vehicle and body to South Bend and set it on fire. Wow. I think she must have really had it out for him because... She had it out for him because at every step during this part of the story, every time she had to make some type of contact with him, even in death, she really disrespected his body even more. I don't know if it was her or if he did something. He left the toilet seat up too many times, but oh, God. Oh, yeah, sleep tight after that one tonight, kids. <laughs> Check under your bed for an axe-wielding monster named Thessalonica. <laughs> oh, that big said, if you box with the show, uh, find me on Anchor or Spotify uh, or the other, I don't know, it's a lot of them. Uh, yeah, when you click on Anchor, I think it'll give you like seven other platforms, eight maybe. Um, on Twitter at Rise and Shine, R Y E Z S H Y N E, uh, or AJ Halfcast, Halfcast AJ, H A L F C A S T A J, uh, Taco Meat 05 for the Instagram, or you could just hit me on uh, Facebook Messenger or, or just my page, whatever. Now, nah, man, like, yo, I love you guys. Y'all have a very, very wonderful rest of your evening. I'll talk to y'all very, very soon. Adios.